Yeah. This is a book which I spoke about it before, but it's so much more about what is going on. And in fact, this is a book which really will give us deep insights about what we have in Israel, the problems that we have. So the book is about the ideological conflict between Israel and the Palestinians in the past and today. So the title of the book is Palestine and Palestinians in Tawakot. And it was translated by Yaakov Lavon with the assistance of Hillel Fender. So, very important book, no doubt. And uh, very important, really, knowledge taken from all the sources Kabbalah, Zohar, Medrash, whatever it is about it. And in fact, in the back of the book, you have the following verse. The book is an attempt to demonstrate how God's providence works to guide the course of world history with a view in mind of throwing some light on present events in order to understand our own days. We must first step back some 4,000 years and investigate the Philistines, a nation which has dogged the Jewish people steps since the days of Abraham, our father, and which our Savior tell us will continue to do so until the coming of the Messiah. So this is why it's so important to know about all this history that we had with the Philistine and uh, a lot for our time. It is very interesting that I wrote in my book, Philistine and Canaanites, yeah? <clears throat> to ignore the religious side of the Palestinians' problem is to ignore the actual source of the problem. We cannot expect to find any solutions by going this way. Far from it to get at the roots of our present situation, we must first understand the spiritual roots of the Philistine nation. So we mentioned, even though the Palestinians maybe physically are not direct directly connected, but we mentioned the commentator uh, Radak and others who say the fact that they are attracted to these places, Gaza, yeah, which was a very famous capital of the Philistine in the past, so no doubt they are spiritually they are connected to this place. The basic spiritual trait of the Philistines is lust. Interesting. The Torah makes this clear right away while telling of the original Mitzrayim, the father of the Egyptian, Saul and Lydia and the Patricid and the Kasselchitz from whom came forth the Philistines. Philistines 
as we know, the Torah tells us, the Medrash really points out that the verse does not say, as do all the other verses in that chapter, who sired the Philistine, but from whom came forth, indicating that their birth was the result of wife swapping between the two parents' nations. Unbelievable. The Kabbalistic scholars add that the very name Philistine indicates that their strength comes entirely from the spiritual power of lust. The root of the name Plishtim is Palosh, a root whose basic meaning is open at both ends. The indication explains the Kabbalists is that the Philistine character has no place in it that is inaccessible to the spirit of lust. It is wide open to evil. Amazing, we see. We saw their behaving the Hamas, frightening, raping, and we, we saw what they did. It clearly <laughs> confirms it what our Rebbe tells us. The base origin of the Philistine is hinted at in the Torah, not so as to sneer at them, but to provide us with reliable indicator of their national character and the basis for understanding their future behavior. For example, why did the Philistine cling so tenaciously to the land of Israel when other of its primable people were forgotten, even to the point where the land is called the land of the Philistine? And why in the same breath is it called both for in the land of the Canaanites? This is by no means accidental. The Torah shows us why the Holy Land is called the land of Canaan. Firstly, more even than with the Philistines, the spiritual essence of the Canaanites was unbridled lust, and through earthy soil, on the one hand, is capable of being the Holy Land, it is also the place where the spirit of lust most clings when the Jewish people are living there, or when they have learned to desire material possession instead of Torah and Mitzvot. What more suitable um, could there be for Canaanite, a nation whose very essence is lust. But what is the connection between the Canaanites and the Philistines? So the Zohar explained the Canaanites embody the worst of the materialistic, egoistic side of the universe and the Philistines spring from the source, of the source. The Canaanite people then are the spiritual fathers of the Philistines, who in turn, since their source is Canaan, crave the land of Canaan to be their dwelling place and remain there despite all the vicious years of history. The strong link that the Philistines have to the land of Israel will not easily be broken then. All the plans that are presently being offered to defeat them by natural means are worthless, as indeed the news shown us daily. Only the transcendent wisdom of faith and Torah can find the solution. So then I carry on and show how all these ideas are indicated in the gematria of the verse. 
So if you take the letters Knan, Yak, Af, Nun, Ayn, Nun, you come to the numerical value of 190, equivalent to the inner contact of the name Philistines. Here is a hint from the very words themselves to confirm what we have already seen in the Zohar, that the inner contact of the Philistine nation derived from the spirit of the Canaanites. So, a lot Gimatia which you have on the land of Knan, which come to 481, which is the same numerical value of the evil force of Lamed Yud Tav, yeah, is an extra, I mean, adding one, representing the force itself. So this is 481. So clearly we see the root of the Philistines, the Palestinians, last connecting themselves with the Lilith, yeah, which is the evil force of lust. So really going more into this idea, you've so much, a lot, in fact, it is very interesting that According to the Zohar, Gog and Magog and the Philistines are connected unbelievably. There is a verse which says, when you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall sound the trumpets and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God. This is a verse in Numbers. So the Bad of Turim explains this verse as referring to the war of King Gog of Magog against Israel, which will occur at the beginning of a messianic age. Unbelievable. What we have today, Gog and Magog, both evil king and evil land, draw their power from the from the negative influence of arrogance. Rabbi Sadok Cohen finds this trait implied in their names. The letter Gimal, I mean, Gogo Magog, a lot of letter Gimal, yeah. So conspicuous in Gog, Gog and Magog is the initial gaive pride, corrected pride. The Shemi Shmuel teaches us that the Destructive pride of Gog and Magog is evident in all walks of life. This is just what the rabbis predicted would be the case in the generation before the coming of Messiah. Rebelliousness and rejection of authority will spread through both individual and social life. This can be seen, sadly, even in the family circle where children are alienated from parents and men and wife are estranged. We see the happening, the happening on a large scale, too, as the secular community is seized by an insatiable urge to throw off the yoke of Torah and misvot, and so it goes all over the world. As for example, the Eastern European nations and others shake of communist domination. King David refers to exactly the phenomena in the second chapter of Psalm. Why are the nations in an uproar? The kings take counsel together against the land and against his atoned one, anointed one, saying, let us break their bones and cast away their cause from us. 
There's a beautiful medrash about this, which says the following. The medrash teaches us that court is a reference to the straps of feeling, unbelieving, which are fundamental expression of our acceptance of God, sovereignty over the world, and constitute a symbol of Jewish service of God. So according to the, the quite famous book by Moshe, Moshe Ripstein, the verse quoted above tells of how the Philistines will lead the rebellion against the kingdom of heaven in the time of Messiah put forth. But there is no real contradiction between these two opinions. For the evil of arrogance represented by Gog and Magog at times become manifested in their nations to, for example, the famous battle between David and Goliath is fundamentally the same battle as there between the Jewish people and Gog and Magog. Goliath, the Philistine, embodies the force of arrogance and he was unique in this strange, as the matter says, two strong men ever rising in the world, one among Israel one, and the other among the nations. Shimshon or Samson from among the Jews and Goliath among the nations. So we know the story with David and Goliath, only the symbol to our time that not in strength we are willing, but with the help of God. So, as I said, a lot more about our situation in Israel. And uh, in the book, Philistine and Philistinian in the records, you can get it in my site, jasonbooks.com or in amazon.com. So, a lot about the situation that we are now in, and the only answer is only by keeping Torah on its spot.